Cloris Leachman, John Shepard, George Chandler, and John Provost as Timmy. And, of course, Lassie. Stuart, why didn't you call me? You know I'd be happy to fix something for you. Oh, I need to do it myself. I'm no baby. Of course you're not. Then why didn't you let me do it? Because I didn't want you to hurt yourself. You understand, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, mom. Isn't that what you were going to call me? Yes, ma'am. should hold you till supper time. I'm not hungry. Oh. Let go, Tony. I can hardly manage this thing as it is. Get away, Lassie. people. Well, I guess that'll mean about, oh, uh, five gallons, don't you? Well, I can make some more. Just a minute, Mrs. Stevenson. Be right back. Timmy, be careful, dear. You might cut yourself. Don't forget your sweater, dear. It's warm out. It's not that warm. We don't want you with the sniffles, do we? Uh, hello, Mrs. Stevenson. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, no, uh, I was just about to say. Hi. Hi. It's a little warm for a sweater, isn't it? Uh-huh. That's what I told her. But she made me put it on. She? Who's she? Oh, you mean Mom. Well, mothers always think that it's cooler than it is. May I take it off? Well, if it uh, stays as warm as it is, I don't see why not. But you keep it close by. Okay. I'll square it with the boss, huh? Can I help? No, son, there's not so much you can do. Nobody thinks I can do anything. How's that? Everybody thinks I'm a baby. She must have fall. Number one, Skipper, it's not very nice to call your mother she. Number two, nobody thinks you're a baby. Paul! I'd like you to move the icebox now if you can. And Timmy, put your sweater back on. See? I'll be right with you. Okay, Timmy, taking your sweater off. Oh? Yeah, it's pretty warm out there. <clears throat> no, Timmy, keep Lassie out of here. Why? Because I don't want her to track up the kitchen. Now, be a good boy and do as I say. That's fine, dear. What's the matter with Timmy? Thanks for babying him. But you won't let him do anything by himself. Why? Just because I love him and don't want him to hurt himself. How about you and Lassie coming into town with me so we can buy some more? 
And if we hurry, we'll have time to stop for some ice cream. Now, how about it? Sure you don't want to come? You should have gone to town with Dad. I didn't want to. Timmy, everybody does or says things without thinking. I do. And your dad. And you. And then we're sorry afterwards and want to apologize. I am many times. Aren't you? Sometimes. But... but... <coughs> <coughs> Here, back last year. Here, dear, use this. I haven't got a cold. Something just must have got on my nose. I think I know what it is. Timmy, would you do me a very big favor? What favor? Don't play with Lassie for a while. Why not? What's she done? Nothing. Nothing, that is, that, that she can help. But I think maybe something in her coat is making you sneeze. Plus, she hasn't even got fleas. Well, wouldn't it be best to find out first? We could put her in the barn until Dr. Stevens tells us what to do. She thinks she's being punished, and she wouldn't even know it for. Well, it'll only be for a little while, dear. Come with me, girl. You better go with her, Lassie. making up excuses. She thinks I believe. You'll hurt yourself, you'll catch you the cold, and you're catching things from Lassie. What kind of things could you catch from Lassie? I don't know. But she still said it was bad for me to be around Lassie. So she locked her up. Boy, if Jeff and Miss Miller knew about this, well, what are you going to do? I don't know. Corky, could you keep Lassie here? Uh-uh. My pop doesn't even like pokey. Yeah. What's that? That's a hutch for the rabbits. Porky, could you build a box big enough for me to fit Lassie in? A box? What do you want a box for? I'm going to send Lassie back to Jeff and Aunt Ellen. Well, if you send Lassie away, you won't have anybody. I'll be all right. As long as Lassie's happy. Timmy, girl. Who put you in there? Why in thunder was Lassie locked in the barn, Ruth? Well, I wanted to keep her away from Timmy until I... Until what? Until I could ask Dr. Stevens what to do about Timmy's allergy. Allergy? I think he's allergic to her. Jumping, Jupiter. When are you going to stop inventing trouble, Ruth? Timmy and Lassie were together for weeks when he lived with the Millers. If you'd been allergic to Lassie, don't you think Ellen Miller would have known it and told us? Well, maybe it doesn't show up right away. 
He doesn't have a cold, but he's been sneezing. I just wanted to check with the doctor. You stay here, girl. Well, let's call the doctor and settle it right now. Jenny, this is Paul Martin. Is Doc Stevens in yet? No, we're all fine, thank you. Just try and keep a secret around here. Hello, Doc Stevens, Paul Martin. No, we're all in the pink. Just a point of information, Doc. Uh, do you think uh, Timmy could develop an allergy to Lassie's fur at this late date? Yes, but no signs of a cold. Nowhere near the woods. We do have the chickens around. Come to think of it, yes. Turpentine, too. He spilled a whole bucket of my paint. Fine, Doc, thank you. Goodbye. I heard paint fumes. Paul, I'm sorry. But, but I think something might happen to Timmy. I'm sorry, girl. Really sorry. <laughs> You better stay till Timmy comes home. Will I ever learn? <laughs> Rome wasn't built in a day, honey. to Dr. Stevens and it's all right to play with Lassie. You aren't allergic to her at all. Isn't that fine? I'm sorry, dear. Really, I am. <laughs> Separating you was a stupid thing to do. That's okay. Can we go to my room now? You better wash up for supper first. Come on, Lassie. He has every right in the world to be angry with me. Oh, how can I make it up to him? How can I make him understand? I don't know. And you just don't know my pop. When he found out what the crate was for, he said, Lassie's a farm dog, and it'd be mean to keep a farm dog in a city apartment. But did you tell him that she'd be happier with Jeff and Aunt Ellen? Yeah, but he says you're just imagining a whole lot of things that aren't true. Well, I'm not. Oh, I believe you. But my pop forbid me to finish the crate. And anyway, when my pop puts his foot down, he steps all over everybody. It wasn't your fault. Thanks, Bucky. Come on, Lassie. What are you going to do? Timmy, where are you going? I don't know. You're not going to run away, are you? No, that's what... No, I promised Jeff I'd never do that again. And I'm not going to break my promise no matter what. Come on, Lizzie. Come on, Pokey. I'm trying to find a way to see Lizzie to Jeff. Oh, I'm thinking. Timmy, this truck's going to Capital City. Come on. You get Massey on the truck, and, and I'll look out and tell you when the driver's coming back. Okay. Ready, girl? Get in the truck, Lassie. Lassie, get up in the truck. I can't lift her. Oh, look out. <laughs> Please take my dog, Lassie, to my Aunt Ellen Miller's. Good 
Goodbye, Nancy. You both understand that the last thing I want to do is interfere. But when I got that letter from Timmy, I... Of course we do, and we appreciate your interest. It's all my fault. I know that now. Oh, don't blame yourself too much, Ruth. We mothers try to build a, a protective wall around our children, and, and the only trouble is that, that we stay on the outside. And the result is that the, the child feels that he's not wanted. But how did he get the impression we don't like Lassie? I'm sending Lassie back to you because they don't like her here. Why, we love Lassie. You know what it must have been, Ruth? All that allergy business and locking Lassie in the barn. Timmy was sneezing and I thought he was allergic to the dog. Oh, that explains it. I've been through much the same thing with Jeff. You see, when you locked Lassie in the barn, that meant only one thing to Timmy. And that was you didn't like her. And if you didn't like Lassie, you didn't like Timmy. You know, love me, love my dog, in reverse. The botch I've made of things. Go ahead, say I told you so. Uh, you know better than that. I think it's important for us to remember, and believe me, I've been guilty of forgetting it many times myself, that the boy is the beginning of the man. He needs responsibilities, a reason for being. Oh, I assure you, it is not easy bringing up a boy. There have been many times when I've thrown up my hands in despair. Well, I could do half as well as you've done, Ellen. Oh, now, you mustn't be so hard on yourself, dear. But I want to be the kind of mother Timmy can trust and love. You are. Oh, I wonder where he is. I'll call the Brockways. He's probably there. Hello, Jenny. Would you ring the Brockways for me, please? Hello, Bertie. Paul. Is Timmy there? Hello? Fine. Okay, then. Goodbye. Porky came home while I was talking. He and Timmy and Lassie were together all afternoon. Oh. Well, that means Timmy will be coming home in a few minutes. Won't you stay for dinner? Oh, how I'd love to see Timmy. But I think it's best for everyone. If he doesn't see me, he doesn't even know I'm here. Besides, I have a growing boy to feed myself. Dr. Bertie. Paul, I can't just sit here. Please, let's try to find him now. Bertie's just dawdling along somewhere. Now, don't worry. I might as well fix that leaky faucet while we're waiting. Get my flowers be right back. He's here in the barn.
Now, son, tell us where Lassie is. We want to bring her home. We want to see Lassie again as much as you do, Timmy. Timmy, believe me, we love you and Lassie very much. I put her on the transfer truck and sent her back to Jeff and Aunt Ellen. I'm going to call Ellen Miller and see if Lassie's there. Lassie! Oh, Lassie! Lassie, that's wrong, too. 